Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to introduce exceptions. If you've been following along, I said we were going to talk about with in this video, although I decided to move that to the next video because this is some fundamental knowledge for that. So exceptions, it's kind of been the thing I've ignored this whole series, but anytime we get an error pop up in the terminal, that's an exception. So here's a simple example. If we try to open a file that just doesn't exist, we're going to get an exception. Now you can have Python create that file as I showed you earlier. However, if you just try to read from a file that doesn't exist, you get a file not found error. So wouldn't it be cool if you could basically say, hey, I wanna try opening this file, but if there's an exception, don't, or like tell the user we can't find it or something like that. So let's try that. So to do that, we say try and indent everything like so. And when you do this, what you do is you say accept, and you can build upon that, but let's just start here, the absolute basics, and we'll just print cannot find file. And I'm gonna zoom in just a tiny bit here. Too much. So let's try this. And running it, now it just says cannot find file. Rather than just barfing a bunch of junk in the terminal, we get a nice output. So it's much more consumer friendly for the user of the application. And when it comes to databases or reading from files and stuff, we don't necessarily want to give all of the details about errors as it can eventually become a security risk. So in an ideal world, we always give them a nice user-friendly version of whatever the error is. Such as this here, it just says cannot find file. It doesn't give them a bunch of jargon. Now there's all kinds of different exceptions and you can look up Python exception types if you wanna know that whole list. However, a very general one is actually called exception and you can specify that here and give it a name E in this case, that's just a, a variable name. And pretty much the exception will be accessible through an object called E. So what we could do is we could work with E and just for now we'll just print E. And running this, we get the string representation of that exception. So that's an, a very general exception, but there are more specific ones. So for example, we could go above this and say, accept file not found error as E and then print E. So this is where you could be a little bit more specific. You could say cannot find file and then down in the, the one down here you could just say something went wrong. You can decide to print E if you're debugging or whatever but ideally for production you're just printing nice things like so. All right, so now it says cannot find file because that one is hit before this one down here. If, for example, this text file existed, so we'll call it input.txt, I have it created. You can go and create it if you want. It's just some strings, it doesn't really matter. And let's say we try to read from this and just do something stupid like a, a bad cast. So we would say, we would say file.read and let's just pass this entire thing to int. So this is gonna cause an exception, but now it's not a file not found error, and instead it's going to hit this one here. So it says something went wrong. So there's a few things that is up to you that's kind of an art, and that is one, how much stuff do you want to put in the try? Generally, I like to keep it to one whole thought, you know, you're trying to do something, you're trying to read from a file, you're trying to parse some data, whatever it might be, but I like to keep that whole thought in that try. You don't necessarily want to put your entire program in that try, but it's also not very good to have a quadrillion tries throughout your code that are very, very small, in my opinion. So a good average size is nice. If you start adding more and more to the try, you'll find that it's harder to be specific on what went wrong because you're not entirely sure. And if that starts happening, then you might want to restrict the try size and, and go to another try block later on. That's helpful for the consumer and you because you, you want to be able to give them more helpful errors than just something went wrong. Now there is another thing you can do in here and that is a finally, and this will always run. So even if an exception is raised, it will always say this line here. 
So this is usually done to clean up resources, whatever that means. It's pretty much a general way of saying closing files, closing connections to databases, doing any saving, anything that's important that needs to be done in case your program explodes. So you can close files here by saying file.close. So you can see that we open the file here, we try to open it, and then we close it down here in the finally. And there's actually a shorthand way of doing something like this, which is what we're gonna be talking about in the next video. And that is the with keyword. So I will see you there.